Good afternoon folks, uh, welcome back to Higher Chemistry, Nature's Chemistry, Organic Chemistry and we are currently today looking at a very short look at carboxylic acids. Uh, you are required to know their names and their functional groups, of course, uh, naming, uh, we had a look, brief look at carboxylic acids at National 5, uh, but today we're going to have a look at the naming of them again, a very brief run through and what the functional group is. Uh, so this is a nice straight chain uh, carboxylic acid. You can see the functional group at the end. The functional group is a combination, in fact, of two functional groups, the hydroxyl and the carbonyl. So when you put carbonyl and hydroxyl together, you get carboxylic acids. Hydroxyl. Spell it right here. So put these two together and you get this which is the carboxyl group. So that's why these are carboxylic acids. They are actually acids, by the way, and the definition of acid at National 5 was something that released hydrogen ions. Uh, and that is precisely what these do. Come back next year for advanced higher. We'll take a closer look at that, though, because they do it in a slightly different way to things like hydrochloric acid. But... Um, don't worry about that just now. That clears off into the water and you're left, it can go and do its acidy things and you're left with an O minus, which means this whole thing here becomes an ion. Um, if we could just clarify that. One, two, three, uh, four, five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So I can't count probably tonight, sorry. Um, double bond O, O minus. If we have a look at some names, the name of this one here. Uh, is one, two, three, four, pens, can you please stay there and behave yourself? Thank you. One, two, three, four, five, I definitely can't count tonight. Uh, that is pentan, pent for five, and because they're all single bonds, oic acid, because this is a carboxylic acid. So this is pentanoic acid. Uh, this... <laughs> Uh, this was hexanoic acid. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm a muppet. It's no longer hexanoic acid, of course. Um, and what we do is we, because it's lost its H, um, so we say this is the hexano-8 ion. This is called a carboxylate ion. So this is hexano-8. We change the ending. Whoops. Because it's not a carboxylic acid anymore. It's a carboxylate ion. But don't worry too much about that. Well, actually, no, do worry too much about that because you're required to know all the names. You'll see why in just two seconds. Properties, they have got hydrogen bonding, which raises their uh, melting and boiling points and their viscosities above what you would otherwise expect for just pure non-polar molecules. They are quite polar, of course, um, which is why the ethanoic acid, of course, is so good at putting on your chips because it mixes quite happily with water. It can form hydrogen bonds between the polarized ethanoic acid molecules and the nearby polarized water molecules. This is delta minus. This is delta plus. Which means we can get hydrogen bonds between them and it dissolves in the water quite happily. Reactions. Reactions of carboxylic acids. Just thought I'd build as a molecule of ethanoic acid, otherwise known by the rest of the world, by the way, as acetic acid. But the systematic name that nobody calls it past school is ethanoic acid. Um, it's a variation on our uh, ethanol dog, isn't it? Where both of its feet are holding the, the, same, the same paw. Anyway, let's move on from that. I'm rambling. Um, we've got three reactions you need to know about, guys. You need to know the fact that carboxylic acids will react with metal oxides, metal hydroxides, and metal carbonates. Does they sound familiar? That's three of the four categories of base from last year. Uh, and they, these bases will react with a carboxylic acid in precisely the same way as they would react with a normal um, mineral acid like hydrochloric. So, for example, if you take specific examples of this, you can have, say, sodium oxide plus, uh, let's go with um, ethanoic acid, just for simplicity. Uh, by the way, I say this elsewhere, but you notice that I will always join the carbon to the oxygen, not to the hydrogen, and not to somewhere in between. That's because that's where the bond goes. Um, that will make a salt and water. The salt, in this case, will look like this. Uh, 
and of course you will make H2O. The name of the salt will be sodium, and then this was ethanoic acid, so that is sodium ethanoate. I was going to write the symbol, sorry. Sodium ethanoate. Um, metal oxide plus, uh, let's go use methanoic acid this time. Which has a seriously sh weird shortened structural formula. It looks like a sneeze. Because it's H-C-O-O-H. Um, just in case they give you the shortened version. Um, this is going to make a salt and water as well. In exactly the same way. Uh, now, this was a methanoic acid, so you want to pause the video and give me the name of this salt. Sorry, I'm actually putting the charges in here automatically. They very often show the charges, just to remind yourself this is an ionic salt. The name of the salt will be sodium methanoate, and you'll also make water. And lastly, metal carbonate will react with, let's pick my least favourite chemical in the entire universe. Let's go with butanoic acid. Butanoic acid is my least favourite chemical because I have a phobia of vomiting. And this chemical here is found in vomit and it smells like vomit. It is butanoic acid, or the old-fashioned name, butyric acid. So, uh, let's say we used um, sodium carbonate. This time you can make three things. If you remember back from National 5, metal carbonates have got carbon and oxygen. So, you make the salt and water and... Pause the video, tell me the answer. Uh, so this is going to be sodium butanoate. And I can't be bothered drawing the rest, so let's just call it C3H, um, or that, H7, 2N plus 1. And we're done. A uh, very quick recap, then I wanted to go over uh, carboxylic acids. SQA page 64, by the way, Scholar, the PDF, if you're working from that, it's quite good, the Scholar PDF. Um, pages 73 to 87, uh, naming them, properties of them, and their reactions. Uh, can I remind you that that hydrogen there is the one that clears off into the water to form the acids and leaves a carboxylate ion behind it. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.